you know when we have all uh, attended conferences in the past you know whenever there was a government speaker you know it used to be boring content and a boring speaker and the private sector guys came with fancy presentations and you know so i have to tell you that has changed the government is running much faster pace than the private sector so don't expect the same level of finesse that you saw in arvind's presentation in mine now what is this presentation that i am going to do look like so you know i used to watch uh, uh, movies before pandemic and never used to watch uh, any ott platform i would just book tickets in a gold class especially with glasses and every movie looked good and then uh, pandemic came in and i was forced to sort of watch ott so the thing that i learned in ott was there are three parts to a story one is some kind of a recap they do that they tell you a story and then they leave some things for the future so my presentation has seven slides first one is some kind of a reflection last one is going forward in five slides is uh, you know what what uh, we think about uh, digitalization in the aditya billa group so for those of you who aren't aware uh, you know aditya billa group is a large conglomerate while we have been known for a lot of our fashion and finance businesses which are on the consumer side um, there's large manufacturing businesses that are not very well known metals hindalco cement um, ultratech but what is even less well known is a lot of new digital businesses that are being launched which are you know just just starting also d2c business called tomorrow uh, pivot which is a uh, b2b uh, and b2c uh, building uh, commerce business and all of those things so the group is changing so my reflection on this topic is that when i was asked by the team that hey you know this is a uh, presentation to be made to a bunch of marketing leaders i said what do i know about marketing i haven't even worked in an fmcg company so what should i do and that reflection led me to thinking about this topic and i felt that you know many a time we look at our company as you know a auto company or a you know cement company or some such thing and that is what we are bound by we look at our roles as marketers data analytics people and all of that so this purpose and identity in my mind tend to get defined by the job that the company does and the function that we are assigned to and the reflection i had was that i think you know in today's fast moving world both of those can be limiting if i start to think that this is what my company does and this is what my function does i think i'll be limiting myself and therefore i think a lot of purpose and identity talk is happening in the industry i think we have to align to a higher purpose as a company and the identity has to be much more broader than uh, you know what we think of so purpose of aditya billa group for example is enrich lives by building uh, responsible and dynamic uh, institutions and businesses that inspire trust and you can pretty much do a lot of things under that you don't have to be bound by the nature of the business and so on similarly as an identity while i am a data analytics person i think my job is to help create a dynamic digital culture aligned to the purpose of the company so i think uh, that is the preamble i wanted to give that uh, you know uh, if you are a marketing person uh, set that uh, you know hat aside if you are working for a company which does something don't think in those boundaries that's my sort of reflection with which i want to share with you some thoughts about the aditya billa group and lessons that we have learned from there and hopefully things that um, i can suggest going forward yeah i think this slide will become quite meaningless this slide was all about uh, you know the india story i think the india story has been said many a times i think what i will add over here is when we look at um, any story about a country you know i use the pest framework some of you are familiar political economic social technological the economic part is well known we are going to grow like crazy i think you have enough data and more and you can find more technology if you listen to arvind's presentation you don't need any more proof to say so i think on the e and the t part i think there is no data needed i think the story is clear i think i want to focus on the p and the s which is the political and the social part i think as we have to grow as a country as human beings i think we have to have a balanced growth and i think that's an area where we as uh, you know citizens or we as company people in whichever role we are playing i think we have something to contribute to i think those are areas which are soft they are hard to measure would you say we have the best political system in the world well, there will be many measures you can never be sure are we the best uh, you know uh, on the social front maybe yeah we have great demographics we have great diversity but we still have some issues so i do think that when we think about future the sustainability element companies are talking about esg and all of that but sustainability to me is much broader than that how do we look at ourselves as contributing to the fabric of that growth the how and the why of that growth and not just the what which is measured so like i said the t and the e are easy to measure we'll all get there but let's all remind ourselves to focus on the how and why and not just get uh, you know um, happy with all the process things so that's all i would like to say on this and then i will want to share a few thoughts around um, 
what we have learned um, in the Aitabilla group, I've been here two years, but uh, I, I look at the journey in the group. There are two sort of parts to this uh, story. Uh, so our businesses, we are seeing, they're all, you know, everyone is doing digital one way or the other, right? We have a bunch of businesses. We are, you know, if you look at the framework on top, it talks about uh, enablement, optimization, and transformation. So when you talk about digital, uh, we kind of break it up into three parts. You know, you can call it low, medium, high. Enablement is the simple stuff. Optimization is slightly complex. Transformation is the more complex. So those are the three levers that we are also utilizing within the group. So from the left to right, our group is launching new businesses. I spoke about tomorrow in Pivot. Uh, our companies are also trying to do new things, doing totally in a very different way, making digital platforms, and then they're automating all of that. So that's the sort of transition which is happening in the group. I think the lesson that we are learning is that if you look at the you know, journey on the right side, I think many a time we get stuck in just doing things. You know, there are you know, three stages of evolution over there. The first stage is about just doing projects. Again, the measurable part. The next stage is about how do you do it so that it is sustained? And why do you do it? Because you do it in the right, for the right reason. So I think that's the sort of lesson that we are learning, that many a times it's easy to be in an illusion of being digital because you're doing a bunch of projects, but you're not scaling or sustaining what you're doing, and maybe you're not doing it for the right reason. So I think that's the lesson that we are learning within the group uh, on the left-hand side, which is captured on the right side, that let's not have the illusion of digital because you are measuring things and feeling that I did 50 projects, so we are good, but also thinking about not only scaling and sustaining, but also thinking about where does those projects come from? What am I trying to do? Am I doing it in a sustainable way, or am, am I my project or my initiative is holistic, or is it just sort of meeting one metric and not taking care of all the stakeholders? So that's the sort of one lesson that you know we have we have taken forward. Now, how do we make culture change? You know, which is the big word all organization is talking about. So I think uh, the way to drive any culture change is to create some kind of a framework which serves as a common language for everyone to follow. Because day to day. People are doing their things. But if you can give them a guide, give them an operating model, I think that's what is matter. So I think based on what has been happening, we have tried to adopt a framework which can be applied across the group, which can bind us together, which is our common language. Let me, let me just uh, build out the entire slide instead of, you know, right. So I think uh, this, this framework has three layers, and we call it uh, ways of thinking, ways of working and ways of doing. Now the bottom layer is the easiest one, the most visible one that I speak about. Doing projects, you know, all kinds of projects, building data platforms. Uh, I think the most critical thing that we are starting to do now is to engage with the government platforms. Because many a times, as private sector, we thought we will do everything ourselves, government is not going to do anything. You saw the last presentation. I think it will be foolish to not utilize the digital public infrastructure that the government is creating. So I think we are embedding the government data platform and the planning. And like I said, they are learning faster than the private sector. So we are embedding that into our thinking. So if you are building a logistics platform, which we are, we are thinking of the ULIP platform that the government is building and trying to leverage it and in some ways influence it. If we are building a retail platform, we are thinking about ONDC. You know, so whatever we are doing, you know, we are thinking about what is the government doing, where are they doing, uh, by the way, government is encouraging us to do a lot of pilots on their platform. So if you are the first mover, you can actually influence the growth of that platform by using it and giving them feedback. So I think that's one uh, fundamental thing on the ways of doing that we are incorporating to say, think about the digital public infrastructure. Don't try to create anything digital in India in vacuum. So that's one uh, you know, fundamental point. So we are building that layer. And then we are trying to build functional platforms in the areas of logistics, customer, energy, predictive maintenance, all of those things which have reusability across our group. So many a time when we are running a physical business, we think all businesses are different. You know, if you were to talk to folks in our logistics team across group companies, they'll say our trucks are look, look very different. The truck that carries aluminum versus cement or paint are different. But by the way, in the digital world, uh, the track and trace feature that we devise is very easily reusable. So I think digital is acting as a glue within our group to share best practices, to leverage what one has done, and bringing us together. So, our, you know, so one of the themes that our chairman talks about is you know, one group, one ABG. And I think digital is becoming that group to say, hey, you know what, whatever is done here in the digital world can be translated, can be used somewhere else. So that's the middle of the platform layer that we talk about. I think the other two on the top are hard to measure and sometimes hard to institute, which is our ways of working, our operating model, our talent, our funding, our you know, procurement process, our culture, our ways of thinking, how do we determine what we do? I think those are areas that, we are, again, we are trying to build frameworks to allow people to figure out 
what is worth solving? Why is it you know, worth solving? I think someone said it yesterday in another conference that I was there that today, earlier data was expensive. Today, data is cheap. The problem is expensive. Which problem is worth solving? How do you determine that? And many a times, you know, we have lionized the idea of problem solving, not necessarily highlighted the idea of problem definition. So we are creating a, or rather created a problem discovery framework. So we are creating lots of frameworks in the top layer to make those real as well. Because in the digital code base, that is easy to understand, easy to replicate. The top frameworks are harder to create and harder to replicate. But we are spending a lot of time thinking about how do we align our ways of thinking, ways of working, and ways of doing across the group so that we can leverage the power of the entire group? So that's the sort of focus that we're doing. Now, what is, what is happening in various group companies uh, you know, follows on the next page. Now, I think uh, one thing is becoming very clear, which is that uh, wherever you are, you, know, you can do something. You know? So therefore, each company in our group is at a different stage of evolution. They are in a different business. And no one has to follow the same template. So Hindalco, one of our aluminum companies, they are doing some really pioneering work in the transformation area by just focusing on talent. So they had a bunch of people from various factories come over to Bangalore for a six-month training program in data science. Now they've gone back. They're sending 15 more. We are having a huddle as we speak uh, in Bangalore with some of those folks, and we'll get more. So they are trying to say, hey, we, we don't have to you know, insert people from outside. We will train our own people. And we will groom people from within. So that's you know, Hindalco for you. Our chemical business below, there's a, there's a reference to them. Um, they were looking at predictive maintenance uh, for their electrolyzers. So their job was to say, how do we bring all kinds of IT, OT data together in one platform so that we can predict the you know, uh, 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 maintenance uh, schedule for our electrolyzer, which was the most important thing for them. So, that's, so bringing data together for them was the most critical thing they are focusing on. Our fashion retail business on the left hand uh, you know, top, they are focusing on their sales channel, experimenting with metaverse. They're experimenting, figuring out new designs, uh, using some startups and ecosystem. Ecosystem is becoming a, a, the name of the game. You know, you can't do it everything yourself. You have to start using ecosystem, large tech companies, small, uh, you know, startups, and so on and so forth. So host of companies are all trying to do their own thing, you know, uh, that um, uh, pulp and fiber business is trying to figure out how to do fast experimentation, fast failure. Um, they have a few plants. Ultratechs have, have hundreds of plants, so they have to prioritize which one to pick up. So everyone is in a different context, but they're all using the same framework to apply to their own context and trying to do something. So a lot of good work is happening you know, across all of these group companies, which is, which is captured in the slide over here. So what's the lesson learned? You know, what, can it be, what can we say that we have learned? And here's what I think nothing uh, you know, this thing, but you know, if you think about this, it's not about technology. You know, we all know this, but sometimes in the day-to-day -day we forget. It's about the people, it's about the culture, and there's a lot of, you know, takeaway over there that how do you build culture? Culture is a product of processes, rituals, and behaviors. How do you create the right processes? How do you create the right rituals? How do you instill the right behavior? Unless you do it repeatedly, unless the leadership does it, then only the culture gets formed. Because culture is a big word, you know, let's create a culture of data. Yeah, but what is culture? process ritual behavior. And we do that. We, we do create culture in different ways. I think that's something that we have learned in the first one. Second, you know, problem solving or in the world of IT, uh, you know, it was waterfall. Someone collected requirement, delivered something. Now it's all iterative. You have to sit together. You have to have squads. You have to have iterations, continuously discovering the new problem. You do something, you think the problem has been redefined. So the old ways of working will not work. So continuous iteration, having domain experts closely involved there, and that's what we were discussing with the team yesterday, that you can't tell us a problem and go away and come back and think that we would have solved it. We will be sitting next to you, and we'll have to do it iteratively. Budgeting. We talk about fast failures. We, we talk about experimentation costs money. So unless your finance team has is also participated in this and they understand what it is and they are encouraging you to say what are you guys doing with it versus you know controlling you how do you do that think about the budgeting process and you know uh, involve them it legal data privacy data protection you can't just use all the data anywhere so how do you focus on that building the team uh, you know we have spoken about that and most importantly with iteration, the real benefit will you know, come up over a period of time. So while you will have small benefits, you will have feature launches, you will do things, but be in it for the long run. The bigger benefit will come in the end. So it's like a balloon payment, uh, as we use the term in financial industry. So have it, you know, culture building, benefits come in the long run. So be ready for the long haul. So those are some of the lessons that you know, we have learned. We think uh, it's relevant for you. Now the question is, this is the last uh, you know, one on the uh, OTT platform. So what is it that someone else can do? What's the way ahead? I think the, 
it's the last mover advantage look at our government we were like last movers but we are now well ahead so i think this whole cambrian explosion of exponential technologies allows that linearity has gone away it's all exponential so actually if you are the last you don't have the legacy of the past and you can do things differently so we that's what the is the message that we have for folks inside our group company there are many companies uh, which have still not started on anyway saying hey you guys are great you haven't started yet you have the biggest advantage because the, so those who have started you can leapfrog them you can get ahead so again this is the same why how and what some of you are familiar with uh, simon shinnick's uh, golden circle it's the same why how and what that you hop, have to reimagine rearchitect and reiterate all three you have to continue to think your ways of thinking have to evolve your ways of working have to evolve and your ways of uh, you know doing have to evolve you can't just do one and all three have to work in unison together like the amazonian flywheel so i think uh, if some of you haven't started yet great this is the time to start thank you